Sid. What are you doing out in the pond, mate? Hi guys and welcome back to Toonin Lee in Thailand and today we're just going to do a little bit about uh, the crayfish and uh, molting their skins or shedding their shells. Uh, we, we'll give you a close-up of what that actually looks like, so stay tuned. Okay, so as you can see, uh, it's not actually Sid, it's a uh, shell of Sid. So uh, our Red Claw Australian crayfish is shed there, is shedded his skin, or really the correct term is uh, molted their shell. So why do they do it? Well, all crustaceans uh, need to change their shells in order to grow larger. <coughs> so the Red Claw crayfish, uh, on average, they change or molt their, their shells uh, between five and ten times per year. Uh, in the second year, that's going to decrease considerably, obviously because they're, they're attaining uh, almost maximum size. So uh, down to about three to five times for the second year of their life. On the whole, on average, from start to finish, they're looking on about 11 11 sheds or 11 molts to gain, uh, to gain their, their maximum size. So how do you actually tell that um, a crayfish is just about to, to, to molt its shell? Well normally they, 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 I wouldn't say they stop moving, but they certainly slow down quite a bit. And uh, they hide a little bit more as well. Uh, and they go off the food. Uh, and they consume more calcium and hold them to that in, the, in their gut rather than their uh, exoskeleton. So the shell is their, their exoskeleton, just like a crab or a lobster. Okay, so if you can have a look underneath here, um, when I first lifted this out, I mean, this I did it yesterday, but I didn't have time to, to record it, so I bunged it in the freezer. So his, his, his arms, have, his, his, his claws have fallen off. But he was perfect, even his, uh, his antennas, <laughs> were about that long. It was incredible. I thought it died first. I was getting all upset. Then I picked up the whole thing. Normally you see it in several pieces. But it looks like they break out here. So if you just take it to pieces now, the whole thing is, is there. You can also see that uh, Sid is definitely a boy because they've got sort of like little uh, clamps there that hold onto the female. So they're on the bottom leg. On a female, they've got their nunu um, on their third legs here, in between their third legs. So these are like clamps hold onto the girls. So hopefully he's been clamping quite a lot with Ong back and uh, we've got some babies on the way. So it's quite, it's quite spongy, this shell. And I think that's more to do with it's, it's coming out the freezer. You can see the claws as well. Another way of um, using shells to, to identify, or their skins to identify male or female. Generally speaking, the, the red claws, the males have this, this red stripe along there. But by far and away, the best way to, to sex them is looking at those, those little pads, the gripper pads. I'll have to look up the correct word for it. But the, considering it's been in the freezer, it's still a nice colour, not not very blue. If we boil if we boil him up for the table, then uh, crayfish go the same colour as a prize lobster, just that bright, nice bright, reddy orange colour. So good, they're growing well. Um, been getting some brilliant tips off the internet. Uh, some very very good information from some of you guys as well. Um, on the on the last post that we did so uh, one particular guy uh, was growing these back in Thailand way back in 2001 I think so probably the first guy to do it and uh, <coughs> so he's given us some some great tips okay I think that'll do it quite a short one today and um, oh I will ask one thing this has just popped into me noggin um, the plant that we've gone with 
we started off with the rosette water lettuce uh, but it was getting smashed to pieces by bugs in here um, so we've gone with this one and the fish don't tend to eat it in the big ponds but the root systems seem quite good let me just bring these up I mean they're nice and nice and developed uh, but I don't I don't know what it is and neither does two no no one eats it the fish don't eat it the snails certainly don't look like they're eating it um, but if someone could help us out here's a bit that, that might help identify it now they've got the little tubers on them quite quite foamy it's like yeah that's the best way I can describe it very very soft smooth foam um, but it seems to be working. Now what, what we have been told and what we have seen on, on various uh, bits of research as well is don't have your tank too clean. The water can be clean but I don't know whether you can make it out. Uh, we're letting the detritus settle on the bottom um, so hopefully when they breed, well we've seen a bit of crayfish sexy time action so they are jigging and um, we've just popped some more females in here you're supposed to let the female um, hatch the eggs actually where they're going to stay so the the adults will come out the ones that are uh, going to give birth um, will give birth in here and then the baby crayfish eat the detritus on the bottom so uh, that's why we're letting it all form on there you don't actually give them a pellet feed or anything like that so hopefully that will work. As I say, it's, it's, a, it's a really interesting learning process and uh, we're looking actually to convert one of our fish ponds as a, as a crayfish grow out pond. Now don't get all excited guys saying that growing crayfish, red claw crayfish in uh, Thailand is illegal. That's bollocks guys. All you need to do is get yourselves in contact with the, uh, Thai, your local Thai aquaculture office uh, tell them where you are, all your details, what you're growing, the sort of numbers and how you're keeping them uh, and then they'll sort your paper out for it. So you don't need to do it for your little uh, aquariums and little tanks like this but if you're going to start farming them in any, any great numbers uh, then you need to get in contact with them. But I'll tell you a little bit more about that afterwards uh, in another vlog because that's quite interesting as well. Again you get a lot of inf misinformation on the internet. It's a great resource of course good information out there but there's also some that's that's incorrect so uh, we'll, uh, we'll put you right on that one because if these get into the river I know Thai people are renowned for electric shocking and stripping everything out of a river um, but there's more concern that if these were to get into rice paddies and all that sort of thing okay then enough blah de blah um, I'm gonna boil shell of Sid up uh, and have a nice crayfish broth. I'm sure that'll be very tasty. Thanks for watching guys. Ta-da for now. Club. 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 Kim, mate. Kim, mate. Kim. Hello, mate. Bye, Leo. Kim, mate.